question at this time uh, is a very simple one. Uh, the question was asked, why is it that you uh, do not believe in tongue speaking? Well, that's a very good question. Why would you not believe in tongue speaking? Uh, really, uh, it, whenever you look into the uh, into that question itself, it's really based on a misnomer. Please understand that to speak in tongues or to have tongue speaking, such as the Bible speaks of, really is to speak in a language. And so the question as it is as it is given, why do you not believe in tongue speaking, that's kind of like saying, why do you not believe in English, or why do you not believe in Spanish, or why do you not believe in French, or so forth. Well, of course I believe in those languages. Folks use those languages, the folks speak in those languages. And an example of this is found in Acts chapter 2. In Acts chapter 2, when the apostles were speaking in other tongues, those who were present on the day of Pentecost and heard them speak said, we hear them speak in the tongues or the languages wherein we were born, it says. And so, uh, everyone, verse 8, says, Acts 2, verse 8, and every tongue wherein we were born. In other words, the languages, uh, their native languages. That's what that's about. But I do know the, the purpose or the meaning behind that question. He said, why do you not believe in tongue speaking? The point being, why do we not uh, practice, why do we not have within the, the uh, practice or the worship of Southside Church of Christ, this so-called miraculous tongue speaking. And the reason for it is, put simply, because tongue speaking, uh, that is the miraculous form of that, as was practiced and done in the New Testament, has been done away. That's why. And to, sh and to show this, look at the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. In 1 Corinthians in chapter 13, this deals with the duration or the length of time in which miraculous gifts would be uh, present or would be active among men. We recognize that there were miraculous gifts given to Christians back in the first century. That is without question. Folks had, uh, had the apostles lay hands on some of them and those folks received certain gifts. 1 Corinthians 12 talks about the various gifts included in that is the speaking in tongues or speaking in languages wherein uh, folks did not study the language, yet these folks were able to speak the language. Well, as you continue in chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians, he talks about then the duration of these gifts and said that concerning this, he said, Now charity or love, this is verse 8, 1 Corinthians 13, 8. Charity or love never fails, but where there's prophecy, they shall fail. Where there is tongues, they shall cease. And where there is knowledge, it shall vanish away. And again, I'm reminded of the fact, I want to remind you of the fact, that when he says tongues shall vanish here, when he says these tongues shall cease or stop, he's not saying no one ever speaking a language again. Obviously, we have all kinds of languages in this world to this present day. But the point is this miraculous gift wherein someone who has not studied the language at all, hasn't done anything like that, could speak fluently in a foreign language and be able uh, for folks to, to hear them speak that language, and those people then respond. And again, the example was in Acts chapter 2, when folks were gathered in Jerusalem from all different nations all over the world, and they were there, and those apostles were able to speak, 12 apostles at this point, Matthias was with the 11 now, and those folks were able to speak, and they said, we hear them speaking, uh, if you'll just... Uh, uh, bear with me, verse 8 of Acts 2, we hear them speaking in our native tongue. We hear them speaking in our native language. That's what that's about. But he says there's going to come a time when these miraculous tongues cease or stop. When is that going to happen? He said when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. And that's, uh, again, there in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. He says that is in part shall be done away. Well, what is that? Verse 10. It has to do with when the completed word comes into effect, then that which is in part, that, such as miraculous gifts and so forth, they shall all be done away. That's what's going on. That's what's happening in that passage. That's what's being described. Somebody says, well, no, that's Jesus in there. No, that's not talking about Jesus at all. Not talking about Jesus 
And in, in, in that sense, he's not in that passage. But it is talking about the completed word because that was the purpose of the, of the knowledge, the purpose of the tongues, the languages, and so forth, was to spread God's word. Well, when that which is in part, see, when that which is complete is here, perfect, complete, is finished, that which is in part shall be done away. That was the purpose. And so when you talk about tongue speaking, that miraculous gift, it has been done away just like all the other gifts have been done away. And now we have God's completed word for us that we can take, we can read, study, follow, apply. We have what the folks of the first century only wish they could have. We have the completed word and that word that will take us from earth to heaven.